Today we're going to have a quick look at the normal approximation of the binomial distribution because there was a really great question that was raised this week and I want to delve uh, a little bit more deeply into it. So uh, first up, we know that when we have a binomial distribution where n is quite small, such as this one, so imagine you've flipped a coin twice and the probability of success, however you want to define that, let's say getting ahead, the probability of success is 50%, so we have a probability distribution function that looks a bit like this, where the most likely outcome is one, but you can get zero heads and you can get two heads. Now, that's not a normal distribution by any means. It's a very chunky, discrete distribution. Um, but what happens is if we increase the number of observations, and I'll just uh, scroll down for you, if we now flip a coin 10 times, we can see that it starts looking a little bit, I mean, it's still chunky when n equals 10, but it's looking a little bit more normal. So that's the whole idea of the central limit theorem, meaning that as n increases, the uh, whatever distribution you've come from will start approaching a normal distribution when you, when you have a sampling distribution like this one. Now, the question raised, which was a, a very great question, I must say, was why do we need this rule? It says here, we can only use a normal approximation where NP is greater than five and NQ is greater than five. Okay, okay, we know what that means. But why has it got anything to do with P? Surely it's got something to do with N because as N gets large, it starts looking a lot more normal. But what does it have to do with P? And so I thought what I'd do is I'd just put side by side these binomial distributions where P equals 0.5 and where p equals 0.1. And you can see that as n increases to 10 for our coin toss example, as I said, it does start getting quite normally, it starts looking a little bit more normal, but where n equals, well, sorry, where p equals 0.1, so there's only a 10% chance of success, when n equals 10, it's still not looking very normal at all. It's got that real skew to it at the moment. It's only when n's gonna start getting towards maybe 50 or 60 that this will really start looking quite normal. So that's the whole idea, but that's why we need that value of P in that test that we do where NP and NQ needs to be greater than five. Because it's almost as if the symmetrical distribution here that occurs where P equals 0.5, it approaches a normal distribution quicker because it's already symmetrical. Whereas this one's a bit skewed, in fact, very skewed to start with. So it's going to take a lot more time to actually look like a normal distribution. N would have to be sufficiently larger. So that's it. But I think it was a really good question. And um, yeah, I hope I've uh, shed some light on the matter.